Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just want to talk again about uh, uh, the comments were made earlier about meaning that rich is meant to all of us. You, you're going to hear me talk about a crisis in a minute. And part of what rich has done to this way outside of us has brought a, a focal point, a crisis starting to brew, an awareness that had to happen in order for a cultural change to be underway. And I want to thank you for that. But what I do want to also concur is the fact that what Rich is talking about, the mechanisms to be in place, the nature clubs, uh, or family clubs, or whatever we want to smell, the natural leaders. Uh, I think Rafael, Rafael is working on a parents campaign. parents campaign, well, I'm going to try to learn more about. These mechanisms have to be in place on a national, as well as local or state level, for cultural change to take place. One of the stories I relate back to for cultural change that happened in the National Park Service, and I'm glad to have Karen, and I said we've got some other folks here from the National Park Service, thank you for being here, uh, is the fact that uh, back uh, a number of years ago, and I've come from a background, I was Florida State Park Director before I was National Park Service Director, did that for 12 years. We were a big state on resource protection, but particularly dealing with fire. Putting fire on the ground was something we believed in. Prevent because we thought it would protect. Uh, and this was long before 1988. Well, many of you might know what happened in the National Park Service in 1988. Anybody know it? Yellowstone, Yellowstone fires. Well, a lot of our resources, a lot of our resource people in the National Park Service never put fire on the ground very much, except at Everglades National Park and a few others prior to 1988. A cultural change happened not just externally, but internally inside the National Park Service that allowed us to now start to do prescribed burning and put fire on the ground to try to help uh, maybe protect Rich's home, which was threatened back uh, some time ago in our Santa Monica Mountain area and other places that uh, we do put fire on the ground there and try to be able to deal with it or do mechanical re uh, removal in order to make sure we protect our resources. It was a, a cultural change. It isn't those in the Park Service. No, we haven't quite said of that cultural change. We still have some of our uh, resource people that just don't want to put a fire onto those trees because it's uh, we're manually doing it rather than let, letting lightning strike. But today, lightning doesn't strike as easily in those regards. But it, that's where they need to go. But anyway, a cultural change happened. But one of the things, what also happened to make it something that started changing life, of, uh, the, what we do with <coughs> fire prevention today and things like that. In other words, remember, and those of you who know the Forest Service, I don't know if we had anybody from the Forest Service here, but we had Smokey the Bear. What did that say? Don't allow fires to burn. That's why I grew up with, you're not supposed to allow fire. Well, here we are as land managers putting fire on the ground. Doesn't that go against culture? Well, we had to change that concept to understand that when it was done appropriately, etc., it was a proper change. And, but also what happened was people in Rollinsfield, uh, Rollinsfield and others came forth and told the story. Wasn't it all in the, in the newspapers and on TV? Yes. What we've got to do today, in my mind, for us to go into the cultural change that we need to happen, Crisis is starting here. His, uh, our book, the book, you know, going out there and talking uh, through being on the Today Show and being on nightly news, all that is happening. But it's still not happening at a level that Rollin didn't truly know. And I think that part of the story was probably true. <laughs> <laughs> I guess as the rest was, by the way. Uh, that, you really didn't know much about what was happening here. My husband, who is married to a you know, park and recreation person and everything else, said, Fran, I know about this because of you, and I, you know, he's met rich and everything like that. But he said, you know, the public as a whole doesn't know, every, everybody doesn't, everybody didn't watch the Today Show, much as we wanted to say we did. Not, and, and the point is, is that we're going to, for, to make the changes that we have to do today. We have to get the mechanisms going, but we also are going to have to wage a concerted 
media effort. The media being, and by that I should say communications effort. That's not only using some of the TV that we get upset about sometimes, but also radio, newspapers, but also the technology, the computers. Baron, you're talking about uh, some of the cell phone work and uh, other techniques could scare me on some of the stuff. They actually know where everything's going on. But, anyway. uh, but don't, we're going to have to use that technology to actually help us take this message forward, as scary as that might feel, I believe. Rich and I have had some of our debates back and forth, but these are things that I think are going to be critical. We also, as being person now at Clemson University, one of the things I'm teaching, Rich and I are teaching, he's a visiting professor at Clemson University, and he's joined us uh, a couple times, will join us a couple more times by technology with my PhD and master's degree students. What do they say to me? They say, well, where is the cited information? Where is all the sites? You know, uh, meaning sites, meaning where are all, where's all the research? Now, there's research out there, but it, what the Children of Nature Network is able to do is starting to bring it together. So we put Children of Nature Network on live uh, as part of our class uh, on the internet. But we have to do more. We're going to need to, in order to wage this tipping, uh, to make this cultural change, we're going to be able to have to go more, more on the obesity piece, more stressing the fact that the children today, and Rich, you say this so frequently, the children today will not live as long as their parents, are not likely to live as long as their parents. But somehow, that's linked to obesity primarily, and obesity, obesity is, for those that have worked on it, unless you contain that person in a, a, in a you know, control their diet and everything else, it's sometimes hard to measure except physical activity and things of this nature, but we're going to have to figure out a way to be able to put some of those concrete facts and pull them all together and be able to hit the media so we catch those that are least likely to be interested in us to actually realize there is a crisis here. And we've got to talk outside of ourselves. That's what I think we need to be doing as far as pushing that, uh, that cultural change. And I'll be quiet after that. Brent, thank you.